Hello. Welcome to Breaking It All Down. I'm Count Zero. It's been a while since I, la uh, since I last reviewed a video game, and while I do have a, a game lined up to break down my full narrative break apart treatment, in a future episode, I have a review I want to put out before then. I recently re rented the strategy game Record of Agarest War from Gamefly, and got about 15 hours of gameplay in before I sent it back. Now, I didn't get far enough in the game to give the story my usual treatment and break it into little itty bitty pieces, like I did with Splinter Cell Conviction. But it is enough time for me to take a good, long, hard look at the gameplay. Just to quickly explain the concept of the game, Record of Agarest War is a multi-generational turn-based strategy RPG. Your character will be... Basically, you'll be going through various generations, you will be finding romantic partners, and then their children will be the character played in the next generation. If, if you played um, Fantasy Star 3, I believe it was, then that's the game, that's a good example of how they're approaching this narrative-wise. Now, I was not able to get through the first generation the first 15 hours, and this leads me to my first significant complaint about this game. The game's pacing is incredibly slow. Between each story sequence, the player will have to fight about 5 to 10 scripted battles, tending more towards the 10 side than the 5 side. Basically about 7, 8, 9 battles between each little cutscene. Now each fight is a turn-based fight like you've seen in Final Fantasy Tactics, Disgaea, Ogre Battle, or numerous other games like this one. They do have one significant difference in the way the fights are structured though. On each turn, instead of having each character move and then attack individually, you assign your movement orders, almost but not quite all at once, all your characters move, and then you give your action orders, your attacks, your spell casting orders, and that sort of thing. This is a novel concept, and certainly something that I haven't seen done in any other game in this genre. The problem is, is the reason that it isn't done in other games in this genre is because it slows the pacing of the fights down significantly. Everything takes longer to do than it would otherwise. Fights are longer. Um, oftentimes you find the player finds himself making a motion, uh, motion so you can attack a certain target or have a group attack on a certain target only to the enemy to for the enemy to adjust their formation to make it so that's not possible which is really disappointing. Another thing with this game is that the fights are incredibly monotonous. Rather than the many different maps of games like this, of this guy, Final Fantasy Tactics, where you have different layouts, you have different terrain levels, and all that sort of stuff, every fighting arena in this game is basically identical. The different locations, like forest, boats, and cave, only serve to basically form as a wallpaper for the actual grid that you have, the ba have of the battlefield. And this grid's dimensions are set by whatever formation your characters are using, or whatever, particularly whatever preset formation you're using. Yes, that's right, this game uses preset formations. You can't adjust your formation and line up from battle to battle basically on the fly, like with most other games in this genre. You also can't create your own preset formation. This makes the battles even more tedious, and it basically fails to make them differentiate each other from each other. Only thing that makes it different is, okay, you're fighting these opponents on this back backdrop. It, it's not fun, it's not interesting, and honestly, if you're, spent, if you're playing a turn-based strategy RPG, the combat needs to be the focus of this. And this is all made even worse by the fact that the game is grindy as all hell. As with most RPGs, you have to grind for experience to level up, and you have to grind for money to purchase additional items. The problem is the game then puts on top of that a weapon upgrade and crafting system, which requires even much more even more grinding than before. To kind of explain, you have to grind for enhancement points, which you use to improve your equipment. Once you've upgraded your equipment completely, you can then break that, break that piece of equipment down into components, which you can use to make better items. 
However, to do this, you destroy the original item, which means you'll need to purchase a new one if you can't craft one right off the bat. And additionally, from the components that you'll get from upgrading your equipment and bre then breaking it down again, you'll also need to grind for equipment by um, basically getting stuff that is dropped by enemies. So that's second bit of grinding. Then, once you have the once you have the ingredients you need for this, you of course must have the recipe. The recipes are gotten through basically finding either books in the environment, if there's in dungeons or that sort of thing, or by purchasing them, which costs money. Then, once you finally have all of the ingredients, and then the money, um, well, the, re the recipe, which costs you money, you then actually have to spend more money to actually do the crafting. And there's a possibility for failure. Now, sometimes this can go well, you can get an item you didn't expect that's better, but sometimes it can turn out worse, which means all of this is down the drain. And it also doesn't help that you have to go through all of this again for researching special abilities. You'll have to buy, you have to grind the money for the books, you'll have to spend the money to go through the procedure, and you require, of all things, ingredients, because you're researching the necessary um, special abilities. So, you have to do that over and over again just to be competitive, because otherwise, you don't get the items as unlocks and shops or that sort of thing. The Basically, the items available at shops are default across all, all the other stores in the area, plus whatever you've unlocked by having crafted one of it. Now, once you've crafted it, you can purchase these items rather than having to jump through all those hoops again. But it will cost you more money than it would to just craft another one. So it's a, it's a trade-off there of, do I really want to go through all the grinding to get all the stuff to get this again, or am I willing to just instead of grinding the ingredients, just grinding the money and just purchasing it, purchasing it straight out. Now, when this game was being promoted for US release, a lot was made of the game's dating sim aspects. Those ads aren't exactly honest. Yes, you do have to get a romantic partner for your character, so you can have a, you can, your character can marry him, marry her, and then get ready for the next generation. Um, and you do need to build a relationship for them because this affects the stats of the character of the next generation. The problem is the player doesn't have much choice in this. You can easily miss spouses. because The game doesn't let you know if you've missed anything. And I even with some of the strategy guides, I ran into problems where I missed a, missed a possible spouse. Further, basically the what raises or lowers the spouse's relationship score with you is more or less arbitrary. Certain cutscenes, no matter what you do, will automatically cause your spouse's esteem they hold you in to drop without um, doing anything on your own part. And then things that you can do to improve how your spouse likes you or prospective spouse likes you basically ha can happen without any input as well as far as or like giving you any hints what to do next. Leaving a town and coming back to a town with your spouse can trigger a cutscene that will raise your spouse's esteem. On the other hand, going somewhere else can essentially, um, or, or going to certain areas and uh, answering incorrectly on a little dialogue tree can also cause problems. Well, not really a dialogue tree, more like a multiple choice thing, but the point still remains. Further, the game's cutscenes are incredibly bland, consisting only of static images on static backgrounds, with basically the sl image sliding back and forth between the different characters, depending on who's speaking. This is an incredible disappointment, considering the tremendous amount of character that's built up in other strategy games like this through their own cutscenes, which, in addition to having this sort of presentation of still images on still background, uh, include, for example, animated sprites and having the characters on the on the map move to reflect what's going on. 
perhaps the best examples of this being Final Fantasy Tactics and once again the Disgaea series, who uses these sprites and their sort of super deformed aspects to tr for tremendous humor. Further, the game makes a big made it a big deal about its fan service. Axis Games, the US publisher of this, made a big, big deal about this. They put a pillowcase after um, with, with a picture of one of the girls from the game in it um, in the box. It has a quote unquote Opai mouse pad, which is an ergonomic mouse pad where the elevated portion is contoured to be like boobs. But, to be absolutely honest, if you're playing this for the fan service, you're going to be horribly disappointed because, I mean, this is a teen-rated game. There are TV shows from just last anime, last season, or anime series from last season, which have more fan service in a single episode than this game has in the entire game. I mean, seriously. Or even for that matter, just, just the stuff that's coming out on DVD now, just putting outside putting aside the most more recent stuff. Um, Canocon, for example, has more fan service on the front cover of a of the last box set. <sighs> this game is a disappointment in every respect. The dating sim elements are bland. The cutscenes are boring. The combat is monotonous. The grinding is tedious and made more dull that by the fact that, unlike Final Fantasy Tactics of Disgaea, you aren't necessarily getting new abilities out of the bargain for all this grinding, aside from what you've researched and purchased. The fan service doesn't even make up for the rest of the game's problems. There are enough good strategy RPGs out there that there is no good reason to play this one, especially for the amount of time needed to beat this game, or even, God forbid, get 100% completion. Do not play this game. Account Zero, thank you for watching.